Welcome to the PCFL Show. Coming up on this week's episode, we've got highlights from our Week 1 games, as well as previews for Week 2 action. PCFL show is brought to you in part by MD Concepts. For all your design needs, call 916-747-9255. Also by HostedSports.com, the only one-stop place for all sports on the web. Be sure to like the PCFL Facebook page and PCFL show links and share those links so we can get more friends, family, and fans involved with their local teams. Also check out the PCFL Media channel on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash PCFL Media. Also check out the PCFL.com for more information. Welcome to the PCFL Show 2012 Week 1 episode. Originally we had planned to do a segment this week where you ask the questions, but due to time constraints we're going to put that off until next week. And to keep the three quick questions segment as an interview, we're going to make this Angry Mike's Mailbox. So please keep your questions coming to PCFLmedia at gmail.com. Now let's get to the highlights. The Stallions Mike Manukian and Deshaun McGregor sack the quarterback on the opening snap to start off what would be a defensive battle. The War Angels were in position to score early, but this Chet Maxim interception stops the War Angel drive. Taking over on offense, Matt Barkira tried to spark the team with an 18-yard run here but the drive stalled. Early in the second quarter, things started to open up as the War Angels put together a nine-play, 80-yard drive. Between hard running by Curtis Berry and throws through the air like this one to Mike Harris, the War Angels were in position to score. The drive was capped off by this two-yard touchdown run by Curtis Berry. It was a close call, but you can see him lean forward and break the plane of the end zone before his knees were down. In the third quarter, the Stallions defense comes up big as Roy Burrows and Deshaun McGregor sack the quarterback. The ensuing punt goes out the back of the end zone, and it's a safety. On the next War Angel possession, another punt attempt, and another safety. A bad punt by the Stallions gives the War Angels a short field, and one play later, Curtis Berry scores on this 10-yard run. Curtis finished the day with 135 yards on 29 carries for two touchdowns. The War Angels were driving to extend their score when Kalen Santiago intercepts the ball and returns it 60 yards. which sets up this one-yard score by Ray Pinkston. The extra point was good, and the Stallions were closing the gap. With 15 seconds left in the game, Ray Pinkston completes a pass to Randy Lambert down the field, but the defender knocks the ball loose, and the War Angels recover to seal the win. Your final score, War Angels 13, Stallions 11. It was a mistake-filled first half for the Knights. Quarterback John Russell threw two interceptions in the first quarter. Quarterback Greg Walton was able to take advantage of the turnover, moving the ball down the field, and setting up this touchdown pass to Will Lawrence off play action. The Barnstormers maintain momentum as Walton hits Nick Breland for this touchdown in the second quarter. The extra point was good and the score was 14-0. This pass interference call by the Barnstormers kept the drive alive and the Knights took advantage. With 1.41 left in the second quarter, John Russell hits Tony Duplessis for the touchdown. The extra point was good. But the Barnstormers weren't going to go into the half quietly as Greg Walton hits Nick Breland for the second time for the touchdown. The extra point was good, 21-7 at the half. In the third quarter, this pass to Mackie McDuffie puts the Knights in great position. It was a close call, but he was ruled in bounds, and that sets up this touchdown run by Angelo Jeffrey. The 
The extra point was good, bringing them within seven. The Barnstormers were driving, looking to extend their lead, but the ball comes loose and the Knights recover. Running back Tay Barbary explodes through the line and takes off for this 50-yard run. That ends the third quarter and sets up this early fourth quarter score from John Russell to Mackie McDuffie. The extra point is good and the score is tied. Later in the fourth, the Knights are in position and Angelo Jeffrey's touchdown run gives them the go-ahead score. Your final score, Knights 27, Barnstormers 21. The first play from scrimmage for the Capital City Fury in this decade was a reverse to Terrence McGee, and he takes it down the field. That set up this 48-yard field goal from Nick Whitaker. The Heat look to answer back, but their play is disrupted by Dete Pong Yan. The ball comes loose, and Arta Costa takes it to the house for the touchdown. Whitaker hits the extra point, the score is 10-0. Heat quarterback Ben Weaver was able to avoid the pressure, but it forced an errant throw that was picked off by Larry Gassaway. But the Fury weren't able to capitalize as the Heat defense stepped up and stopped him in four downs. In the second quarter, the Heat were able to move down the field, setting up this field goal before halftime. Beginning of the second half, the Heat took the ball down the field and put another three on the board. And the Fury answered back with this touchdown run by Kimby Drayton. And Whitaker hits another extra point. He finished perfect for his extra points for the day. You can tell momentum was on the Fury's side at this point as Robbie Longin scoops up the bad snap and hits LeKendrick Edwards for a first down. And to cap off the scoring, Terrence McGee takes it in from six yards out. Whitaker hits the extra point. And your final score, Capital City Fury 31, Reading Heat 6. The PCFL Show is brought to you in part by Graves Video Production. Capture life's great moments. Go to gravesvideo.net. Also in part by Sweet 51 Video Productions, official videographer for the West Valley Wolves. You are watching the PCFL Show with your host, Angry Mike. After both teams trade three and outs to start the game, the Hurricanes move the ball into Giants territory when quarterback Ronnie Small scrambles for 25 yards. The Hurricanes get the ball all the way down to the seven yard line with this third down conversion. But three sacks by the Giants defense pushes them back, forcing the punt. Which is blocked and recovered by Roderick Cooper of the Giants down at the 17. The Giants waste no time and score on a 17-yard pass from Javon Cherry to B.J. Wimberly. In the second quarter, it's the Hurricane defense stepping up to make the big play. As Anthony Robinson, Cherry picks the Giants quarterback. Running back Cedric Purify almost gets in for the touchdown, but you can just see his knee go down before getting in. And once again, the Giants' defense steps up as they force the fumble, and Rob Sherman recovers. The Giants try to run it, but number 99, J.D. McLemore, shuts it down in the backfield. With the Giants pinned deep in their own territory on third and long, Javon Cherry connects with rookie wide receiver Ray Twine for an 85-yard touchdown. Amidst a hailstorm in the fourth quarter, the Giants started moving the ball down the field, trying to extend their lead. Quarterback Marquez Shaw hits Ray Twine for this 36-yard completion. But the Hurricane defense denies the Giants by forcing the fumble. 
The Hurricanes try to take advantage by moving the ball in a late rally. But Denmark Gibbs of the Giants picks the ball off, sealing the victory. Your final score, Giants 12, Hurricanes nothing. The Solano Chiefs and the Roseville Bears both seem to have trouble settling into a groove in the first quarter. Both quarterbacks Vic Tildesley for the Chiefs and Logan Hollis Jr. for the Bears threw interceptions. Cornerback Leroy Dunn brought this errant pass in. The Chiefs thought they'd be able to get into a groove with this misdirection run by Wayne Rippard for 10 yards, but the drive quickly stalled. And the Chiefs' defense couldn't get any pressure as Logan Hollis Jr. used his feet to evade pressure and take the ball down the field. The Bears' defense kept disrupting the Chiefs' offense as Roddy Ernest tips the intended screen pass, catches it, and takes it in for the touchdown. Pat Powers puts the extra point through. The Bears get the ball back, and Logan Hollis Jr. shows why he's as much a threat on the ground as he is through the air. The Chiefs look like they're finally going to get on track as Vic Tildesley hits Austin Winston for this 45-yard completion, but he's stripped of the ball and the Bears recover. In the last play before the half, Logan Hollis Jr. throws it up and Frankie Gomes comes down with it for the touchdown. In the third quarter, a bad snap by the Chiefs results in a safety. Anthony Bell picks this one off and takes it back for the touchdown. And pressure from the Chiefs just isn't quite quick enough as A.J. Chambers gets this ball out and completes it for the touchdown. Your final score, Bears 37, Chiefs nothing. The West Valley Wolves came into this game determined to move the ball. They attacked the outlaw defense both on the ground and through the air. Some hard running made it look like the Wolves were going to score on this run. But he was ruled down at the one, setting up this one-yard sneak by quarterback Jason Winter. Running back John Benton showed a good combination of speed, agility, and power, breaking tackles, getting to the outside on this run. And on the next play, they gained a huge chunk of yardage thanks to C.J. Smith, who laid it out for this grab. But the Wolves weren't able to take advantage as the Outlaws stripped the ball and then take it back 14 yards. In the third quarter, the Outlaws scored on a touchdown pass. And on the Wolves' next possession, Teddy Anderson hits Matt Peacock for the touchdown. The Wolves also scored on an end zone fumble recovery recovered by Aaron Burse. And later in the fourth quarter, they added to their total with this quarterback run by Teddy Anderson. The other Wolves score came on this read option by Anderson, who took it in from almost 30 yards out. Outlaws quarterback Trent Thompson threw for two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, finishing the day with three touchdowns and three interceptions. And your final score? West Valley Wolves 30, East Bay Outlaws 18. Let's take a look at our performers of the week. You're watching the PCFL Show. Now let's get to the Week 2 Previews. The Stockton Hurricanes are hungry after dropping their opener to the Golden State Giants. The defense was fairly solid, but they're looking to get the offense back on track. 
They take on a Central Coast Barnstormer team who are just as hungry, especially after dropping a 21-7 halftime lead over the Knights. The offense and defense both looked good at times, but what they're looking for is consistency. The Hurricanes take on the Barnstormers this Saturday in Gilroy at 4 o'clock. Sponsored by JL Design Studio. Graphic design with your business in mind. The Outlaws are looking to bounce back at home this weekend. On offense, they need to minimize the turnovers that plague them. And on defense, they need to make more stops, giving their offense more chances. The Giants need to keep momentum going from their opening win. They've shown their defense can swarm the ball, but their offense needs to show improvement in the passing game. The Giants take on the Outlaws this Saturday at 1 o'clock. Sponsored by Pittsburgh Smog. The Capital City Fury take on the South Bay Stallions this week in the Battle of the Black and Gold. The Fury showed a stout defense and a solid running game, but can they balance out their attack when they need to? The Stallions also were solid on D, but still gelling on offense. Let's hear post-game comments from Chris Haber. Today, the offensive line didn't do as well as I hoped it would. Uh, we got a lot of new faces, new guys coming in, and we haven't really had the chance to mesh together. And once we actually get that click, once we get together like that, I think we're going to progress a lot farther than we did last season. It's just that we need the time to mesh with each other before it gets moving. The Fury take on the Stallions this Saturday at 5.30 p.m. at Piedmont Hills High School. Last year, the Heat and the Chiefs played a burner up and ready. Both teams lost their opening games, and both teams want to win. It'll be interesting to see what changes are made by both teams based on their opening performances. The Reading Heat take on the Solano Chiefs this Saturday at Vaca Christian High School, 1 o'clock kickoff, sponsored by La Cabana Restaurant, the best in homestyle Mexican cooking. The Roseville Bears are coming off a decisive victory over the Solano Chiefs. They're strong on offense and defense, but still need consistency. Will they be confident or too confident as they take on the Richmond War Angels, who have a strong defense and a powerful running game behind running back Curtis Berry? Bears, War Angels, 7 o'clock at Pinole Valley High School. The Knights had an impressive comeback against the Central Coast Barnstormers. The Wolves had an impressive opening day win against the East Bay Outlaws. Will the Wolves' running attack be hampered by the possible loss of John Benton? We'll find out this Saturday, Merrill West High School in Tracy, 6 o'clock kickoff. Sponsored by Tanya K. Photography and Design. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Just want to remind everybody, one of the PCFL's own, Kevin Pringle, is a finalist in the Lucky Break Contest for 95.7 The Game. Be sure to listen the next three weeks, Wednesdays at 7 p.m., and vote and show our support. Go to 957thegame.com for more info, and don't forget to share our show links on Facebook. I'm your host, Angry Mike, and I'll see you next time.